everybody welcome back to the show i am super excited tonight we're gonna keep this quick because these guys are have a busy schedule and we don't want to hold them up too long uh we are so incredibly lucky to be joined by two amazing guests tonight first you may know him as deputy james garcia on reno 911 but he's also an incredible stand-up comic as well as a prolific voice actor having voiced a crazy number of iconic characters from Rocco on Rocco's Modern Life, Spyro the Dragon, and who could ever forget the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, also joining us is, is amazingly talented daughter. She is quickly gaining attention as a voice actor in her own right. She's appeared in a number of shows, most notably playing Rock Talk in Star Trek Prodigy. Guys, let's not waste any more time Please welcome my guests for tonight, Carlos and Riley Alzaraki. Yes. <laughs> that was really good. It's tough. Talk about being intimidating. Right? You guys are great. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Um, uh, first off, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix your camera here because I jacked that up. But we're live, so that doesn't matter. They can hear you. Um, but let's talk real quick. Obviously, you're here to promote your appearance in. Uh, Farpoint, which is the Baltimore convention. I think it's February 10th through 12th. Uh, what, what's it like getting to to get out there and, and meet with the with the uh, the fans? Well, it's Riley's first time, and it should be a little asterisk. We are arriving the evening of uh, Friday, so we won't be on the floor the first day. That's sort of an opening ceremonies day, but we will be there all day and all day Saturday. She's never done it. I think she's going to be excited. She went to New York Comic Con, right? Mm -hmm. But you were part of a, a panel there with uh, Star Trek Prodigy. And it was a big ballroom. And I don't even think they did a meet and greet afterwards. So this will be sort of her first experience. I've always loved it. As a, as a former stand-up comedian on the road, now I occasionally still do gigs, you know, it was, you were lonely. You were by yourself most of the day. And then you would go to the club for four hours, do a couple of shows, meet some fans, and go home. This is the inversion of that. You are around people all day that think you're great and think you're cool. And it's pretty, it's pretty wonderful. And they're fantastic. As you know, a lot of our, our population are, have autism or uh, some of those sorts of uh, uh, um, conditions. To them. Yeah. They, they come and they, and they love you and fans love you. And it's all ages. And I'm excited for her, Riley, to come and meet, actually see her fan base face to face. And uh, I think she's a little nervous about it, but it's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, awesome. And, and Riley, for you, I mean, like you said, you, you, you've been to New York Comic Con. Obviously, this is this is different in, in, in you know, I'm, I'm a frequenter of New York Comic Con. That is a massive, you know, second behind only like San Diego Comic Con. So this is a much smaller, uh, um, intimate experience. Um, are you know, what are you most excited about as far as uh, engaging with, with your fans? That's mostly it because um, at the New York Comic Con, I was with my cast, most of my cast, and all we really did was we went on stage. Um, it was like my first time like meeting like half of them too. So we went on stage, we did that, and then we didn't really get to meet anyone. We just saw people in the crowd. So I definitely think I'm more excited to meet people, and I also am excited to see the other um, stands that they have running and see – if like I know a show and then I get to go experience that too. So I'm excited to be a fan too there as well. Very yeah, exciting. Well, we get to meet one of the people that's going to be there is Billy West. And he's my icon. He's my idol. One of my voice yes. idols and the nicest guy in the world. I'm excited for Riley to meet uh, Billy. She already works with obviously Kate Mulgrew, Brett Gray. Uh, uh, what was Purnell's first name? Ella. Ella Purnell. Uh, but working with Dee Bradley Baker, who plays Murph on her show. So it is fun. I, I love that part of the cons is meeting the fans and saying hello. And then like, for me, it's like, I'm a huge Blade Runner fan. So I'm talking to Sean Young. Uh, Sean Astin's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, my, my neighbor, Kari, Kari Payton from The Walking Dead. I, I ran into him in Calgary. Um, and David Harbour one night. It's like, you're out. It's fun. It's, we get to meet our sort of uh, showbiz heroes as well. And that's, that's really, I'm excited for her to, to be at her booth, but also behind the scenes. So. Sure. Yeah, you, you get both experiences of it. I actually, I was at Shore Leave a couple months back and I, and I met Bonnie Gordon, who plays the ship's computer yeah. and, and she was wonderful. And she's gonna be coming on the show a little later. So uh, uh, I'll pass along a hey for you if, if you'd like. Yeah, Bonnie's great. We saw her at one of the little premiere rap parties we did at the theater. And 
that they took the kids. Now the kids, it was family area, but it was a it was a bar. But we sat out on the outdoor patios and we got to meet everybody there that uh, was there that night. And she's she's a lot of fun. She's who super That's talented. Awesome. That's awesome. And I'll, I'll remind the audience, if you guys, I mean, obviously we don't have them for a long time, but if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in the chats and we'll try to get to them. Um, so Carlos, uh, uh, I mean, obviously everybody knows you from, from uh, uh, Reno 911. Uh, I, I talked to our audience a little earlier and I was like, you wouldn't believe the amount of things he's done from Rocco's Modern Life, Spyro the Dragon. Like we're going through your list of, of just so many accomplishments working on uh, hundreds at this point of just acclaimed series and and you are a prolific voice actor i've i've watched um you, you put up great content by the way on tiktok instagram twitter i highly recommend people check it out because so entertaining watching you do these voices um i i just also wanted to mention because i, I think it gets a little overlooked unfortunately so that you're an incredible stand-up comic and that's where you really cut your teeth um, even winning the San Francisco Comedy Festival, mm -hmm. which not just winning it, but beating Mark Marin and <laughs> Patton Oswalt to win Pat it. Patton Oswalt. And then years later, I was on Mark uh, Marin's WTF podcast at his house up there in Silver Lake. And he was like, Carlos, what's the deal, man? How did you win that night? It was still bugging him. I'm like, Mark, I think your career's going okay. You interviewed President Obama. I think you're doing okay, man. But yeah. it, it's weird how it stuck with him. Patton, I don't think it was ever big of a deal. I, and I always said to Patton and, and Mark that you guys, I thought, were the better true comedians. I was just a really great performer. And But yeah, I'll always have that notch in my belt, right? I, was like, I beat those guys in 1993. Hopefully, I'm not at a bar when I'm 10 years from now. Like, hey, I beat Pat and Oswald and Mark Marin. Where's my free drinks? No. <laughs> but uh, it was great. I don't think Riley's ever really seen that side of my life, really. That, that Tom Kenny and myself were born out of stand up. Tom via via Syracuse via uh, a group that he was with Bobcat and uh, with Dan Spencer and Paul Kozlowski called Uncle Stinky's Dipsy Doodle Review. And then they were each individual comics. And we were in San Francisco, and that's where I met Tom Kenny, and that's where I cut my chops as a comedian. And in 1991, there was a, a a little audition for a show called Rocco's Modern Life, a little project, and I went in with no agent. I had made a voice tape and. Uh, met Joe Murray and Nick Jennings and George Maestri and did Spunky and, and tried different voices. They didn't want Australian. And I this I kind of picked up a vacuum manual and started reading like this and, and they liked me. And then we did a pilot. And then uh, about a year or two later, we went to series. And both Tom and I were really green. Tom, Kenny and I were stand-up comics. And we met the first day of recording a guy named Charlie Adler. You can look Charlie up, amazing, who was like, oh, Ben, Rocco, yeah. Uh, uh, and it was people like Charlie and the, and uh, Tress McNeil and all those people that gave you permission to go, oh, I can pull what I do off stage and do it behind the mic. They, we really grew. And now Riley is getting to work with some super top actors. Um, I don't even work with her in the booth. It's my wife. So, so she, uh, I think she saw my wife and I kind of, doing characters and we exposed you to what newsies when you grew up mm -hmm. annie we loved annie and now i think we just sort of passed it on organically it's like we never really said you're going to be a voice actor it's just that she was kind of good at it because of what we exposed her to so yeah i was actually yeah. i was gonna actually you brought up a great point riley uh i don't know if you know this but but your dad mentions you in his comedy quite a few times. I was curious if you've ever gone back and watched some of those clips because you know he, I, I remember one clip a uh, 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 clip very vividly about him uh, having to kick you out the way so he can get out to his uh, his comedy show and you know show <laughs> that that yeah. that's more important. <laughs> Stranger love. Um, I mostly remember the time where um, oh we were at the mall for like a father daughter date and. Um, he like forgot to pay a parking ticket or something. And I was really little at the time. So like, I didn't know how to unbuckle. I was still in like a really tiny car seat and the car started rolling and <laughs> I was screaming and I didn't know what to do. Cause my dad was like really far back. And then the guy jumped in the car and saved me. And then his wife started yelling at him. Yeah, no, it might've been his wife. And then you said on the way home, <laughs> Riley says, can that guy be my daddy? And I said, yeah, mom finds out. That's a good possibility. That's a true story. So, 
<laughs> she definitely remembers that bit because it happened to her, but she doesn't remember the fall off the bed when she was five months old and smacked her head on the ground. That, yeah, that's a that's a that's a great bit. I mean, yeah, most people wouldn't. Um, so okay, so uh, 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 with with Rocco, I gotta ask because um, really to let people know, just because you know, uh, uh, obviously we've talked about Tom Kenny and 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 SpongeBob SquarePants is, I mean. At this Dude. point, is iconic. It's it's massive. It's, it's like the Simpsons, right? It's it's mega. But really, without Rocco's modern life, I really believe there is no uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, right? Because obviously, you know, Tom came from that, and I know a lot of the staffers came from that and worked on that show afterwards. I mean, yeah. so th there there's definitely a, a kind of, in my view, anyway, kind of a, a father son dynamic <laughs> where that that spawned the other. I mean, yeah, I think Skippy's a duo, right? Without Chris Felucci, you could argue that Rocco's not born with that sort of duo, that 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 team together, one, where one is more astute and one is less astute. Obviously, SpongeBob and Patrick, Rocco and Heifer, Steve Hillenberg, Derek Dryman, Marco Hare, uh, Swampy Marsh, Dan Povenmire now, so, you know, uh, Hamster, Hamster and Gretel, uh, Phineas and Ferb. All of those guys, Hillenberg especially, they were born out of Rocco. They were the young directors and the writers and the storyboards people, Doug Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence, AKA Filbert, uh, Plankton, also born out of that group. So there was this rich pool of people that was born out of Rocco's Modern Life that, yeah, without that show, you might argue that it might've taken more time or maybe they didn't, wouldn't have gotten the creative development they would have to, right. to think of those ideas. But Steve was always a fan of the ocean and, and written a, uh, more than a few episodes for, for Rocco. But yeah, th that, that is just a great group of people, you know, and our first experience. I, I didn't know what I was doing. It's so green, but to be Rocco, you know, he's still, he's still revered and people and to meet new audiences now, right? People my age, obviously, and older. And now actually to work with Tom Kenny on uh, Camp Coral, where Tom is my director. And here's this guy I met in 1987. And now Tom is directing me uh, in this Camp Coral. And it's just bizarre. And now to kind of pass it on to her and go to her records. And it was fun for me. Here, our experience at the uh, New York Comic Con was we had waited an hour to, to be able to do the Star Trek Prodigy experience where you get to sit in the captain's chair and then play some interactive games. And we're just about to get to where we, we waited an hour. And they say, oh, the actual cast is coming. So you're going to have to step back. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. And so we got to uh, hijack her cast and, and do that. And it's kind of fun to come full circle and be a civilian and watch that experience. And here's what, Riley has not experienced this yet where people are going to go, oh my gosh, I love Rock Talk. You don't know how much it means to me. Right. And I never really understood it because I did Spiral the Dragon, right? And you changed my life or whatever. Or like you say, the military, thank you for your service. Really appreciate what Reno does. But I didn't get why people got so excited about voices. And one day I'm standing in Salami Studios here in Los Angeles, North Hollywood with D. Bradley Baker and Fred Tatashore. And I say, I stink at video games. The only one I know how to play is Left 4 Dead. And D goes, I'm the Joker and I'm the spitter. And Fred goes, I'm Boomer. And I'm like, oh, oh no way. I totally fanboyed out because I had spent hours playing that game. And I know those characters. And then that's when it clicked. That's why people love it so much. They feel that you really know these characters. And to meet the faces behind them, it's kind of incredible. So I can't wait till she sees the looks on people's faces, young, middle, old, that say, I love Star Trek Prodigy. These are my favorite characters. Rock Tuck is my favorite character. It's pretty satisfying what we do. She's going to get to experience it for the first time. So. Yeah. that I mean, that, that's that's so true. Uh, I do want to ask one more question on just on Rocco because, again, so, mm -hmm. so impactful. Um, in 2019, a couple years ago, Netflix releases Rocco's Modern Life, Static Cling, I mean, for those that don't know, this is this is the 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 cast returning to these characters twenty plus years later. What did that mean to you to kind of go back to that character to tell the twenty plus a year later story? It was amazing. I remember being at a diner with a buddy of mine, social media guy, and uh, we see Martin Olson and Kaz and Joe Murray just walking to the diner together. And I'm like, mm, that's kind of strange. What the heck's going on here? Okay, keep this on the DL. And that was 2015. And by 2016, we were recording in November. And it was bringing the band back together. It was like the who's like, can you guys still play? Are you sober? That was the problem. 
but we're like, yeah, let's, we're going to do this again. It was amazing. And we have a lot of BTS footage um, that I put on in my Instagram, but to be with Charlie and Tom and Linda Wallum again, and Jill Talley and Mr. Lawrence and find those voices and go, like, really, Rocco, is that high? Because it's way down here now. All right, hey, Mr. Big Head. You know, and even even rapper, you know, Tom's like, I don't know if I can get that high anymore. So we were really all finding the voices like, I can still play this tune that we played 25 years ago. 30th anniversary is coming up this September 18th, actually, of Rocco's Runner Life. But it was magical to put the voices back on again and go to Comic-Con and have people so excited about it. And really, with she has seen Static Clean. She has, she's seen one episode of the original, actually. Um, the old one of the first episodes, the Suckomatic, I think, but it really harkened back to the true first couple seasons of Rocco and they really captured it. So that part was wonderful. Yeah, it, it released to rave reviews. Everybody loved it. Uh, Riley, let me ask you. Obviously, you're you're very young in your career, right? You're just starting out. You've got and you've already got some great work under your belt. Um, as you look forward to your career, um, what are you like? What's your acting wish, right? Is there a is there a, a star you want to work with? Is there a director you want to work with? Is there a franchise you want to get into? What, what are you looking forward to? Um, so for my voice acting career, I think I, um, as I grow up, I will continue to do it. But I'm really, I also do um, on-camera acting and stuff like that. And I think in like acting itself in general, I want to more focus on that as I grow up. And um, I, I've booked... Um, a few things there, but my goal is to get like that one thing that just like changes my life. It could be, it could be like a movie and or a movie or TV show. And for voice acting too, I guess it's like the, the same. Like Star Trek is definitely helping me grow as well. So I just, de I definitely just want to get that one thing that can really boost me up. Now, before you wanted to like, oh, if I could work with Millie Bobby Brown, but now you saw Wednesday and you would. Love Jenna Ortega. Yeah. I know. Nice. Um, she because she'll ask me. I work with Jenny Ortega on Elena Vavilor. It's Jenna. Jenna Ortega. Sorry. See, that's how I'm an old guy. Hey, I work with that Jenny. Um, and that's like, do you know her? Do you have her number? And I'm like, no, we just I, we never showed up in the booth oh. before. She gets excited because I get, I'm cool by proxy. Like Brian Stepanek, who's the father in the Loud House, was Ricky, Nikki, Dicky, and Don. He's the dad on that. Uh, the uh, our friend who did uh, School of Rock, the series. I, I worked with him through the Groundlings and through Wiener. I've worked with all these cool. I worked with Tara Strong, Scott Menville, Kari Payton, all Teen Titans Go when she was huge into Teen Titans. So I always get dad cool points. But yeah, I think she's had opportunities, but realized that she's wanted to go to school and be with her friends, right? Instead of. I've had the opportunities before. I remember there was a Nickelodeon show where I was really uh, advancing. I was like getting a lot of callbacks and stuff. And I really thought about it. And I was like, do I really want to spend, it could be like, like you, who knows how many seasons. I don't know if I want to not be around, like not live my life at this age and kind of be stuck in it. I mean, it's, it's great. They, they treat it very nicely, but I didn't know if I wanted to do homeschool for all those years and be in that type of life when, all the real world is waiting right here for me. So it was kind of like, I was kind of just thinking about which one to do. And I realized that I think at this age, it's better for me to kind of like go to school, middle school. I mean, I have to experience that. So I, as I'm older, I feel like I, I would be more okay with that. But at the age I am right now, I think I'd probably want to stick at school with my friends. Yeah. Very and mature answer. That. And one, one, one thing that kind of ties all the three of us together, she did a Villains of Valley View, which is on Disney Plus. Uh, the, you know, and then for me, I got to meet Lucy Davis, huge fan from the original British office. And she played a Savannah, Savannah, this girl that really is sort of uh, fighting with the super villains uh, because the villains want to ruin Christmas. And she's like, well, you can't ruin Christmas because my dad is coming home from the military. Or my, I, we, light, we light up the Christmas tree and I send him videos. He's away. He's uh, serving overseas, but in the end, I end up playing three lines. It's really all Riley's role. And they said, do you want to just come in and play two lines as a soldier? And I'm like, absolutely. And so it kind of tied it all together. We got to play a, a very fun episode. She got to be on set uh, working with really great pros. And it, it, it is, it does light that fire, 
but it's different to be, she realizes it's different to be a series regular where you are missing that part of your life because you're going to set school and you're on set every day. So it's nice that she can guest star or audition for movies and keep doing voice work because she can still have the regular life and conventions are on the weekend. So uh, if we do more than, you know, just this one this year, she doesn't have to miss school, you know, she right. can go on the weekend. What, uh, let me ask you, Carlos, what does it mean to you to share this industry that you've grown up in, basically? I mean, you spent your whole life in in one form or another. What does it mean to you to share that industry with with your kids, with your daughter? With I know you have another daughter as well. Um, yeah. and, and also, what wisdom have you imparted upon them? Oh, well, you know, in this business, we deal with a lot of rejection. Uh, she's biting into, a, what is it, a fruit drink? She doesn't want to get, she's, she's sucking on jello. <laughs> um, you know, my other daughter, Austin, they, they, they both did a rocket uh, mortgage commercial where they were living next door to the crazy cat lady. Um, we did that in, 20, in COVID actually 2021 in Michigan. Um, but you know, I help her deal with the rejection because you audition quite a bit and you don't get a lot of what you audition for. I tell her to really enjoy the, the aspect of like, when you've got something golden, like because sometimes you don't always feel like recording, even if it's a great show. There's times I don't feel like being on the set of Reno because I know I'm going to wait in the trailer all day. But then you have to tell yourself, you're really lucky. This is a very amazing opportunity. It doesn't mean it's not going to get boring or, or tedious sometimes. So you teach yourself to, the professionalism. Always try to be professional. Even if you're not feeling it, go on that booth, get on that set, deliver, go home, and then complain to us. Because it, it, is, it is work sometimes. It's not always fun. You know, learn lines. You got to audition and fail, audition and fail, audition and fail. And that's the part nobody sees, right? You're like, I read for that. I read for that. I read for that. I read for that. Oh, got one. Got a small job, you know? So I think we can impart on them that it, it just keeps, she sees me doing audition after audition and so and funny. not getting it. And it's, it, it helps her realize like, hey, you just don't always get it. You just got to keep going. Yeah, I had I was speaking with one actor on on an episode, and and they said this crazy thing that's always stuck with me is, as an actor, you're not getting paid for the work you're doing, you're getting paid for all the auditions you didn't get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Greg Binkley is a uh, character actor friend of mine, and he teaches the class, and he's just like, the the best you can do is stay prepared to audition. That's your job is to be be the best prepared actor to do that audition, and getting the the job is a bonus. And so at her early age, getting summer camp island. And doing other projects. Our first job was um, Doc, Doc McStuffins. I, I knew Maria Estrada and Riley auditioned, and she got it. And you know, very lucky. And sometimes that can be a curse. You you think that you're entitled to all these jobs. So, but as an adult and as a child, it's hard to audition and not get picked. And that's what really is hard on child actors, right? You can have this sudden level of fame, and then it's not there, and you don't comprehend that. Because even as adults, we think things are linear, right? If I do Rocco, I'll do this, I'll do this show, I'll do this show, I'll be just like Tom Kenny. And like, well, Tom Kenny has his sort of trajectory, and I have another trajectory, which I love, and it's different, you know? Uh, I would love to, it would be amazing to be part of every cast that you, uh, of a show that you love, but... Oh, that's my youngest daughter is probably getting called to do uh, gaming. But yeah, she we're, that's what we're teaching or that she's learning from us is that it's okay, man. It's just, yeah. let's go to every premiere that we get a chance to go locally and meet Kevin and Dan, Hegeman brothers, and and talk with them and, and, and be excited with them. And um, let's just have fun. So Absolutely. And we're, we're running short on time. Uh, we've already kept you long enough. I do want to ask you, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention your amazing character, Deputy James Garcia, yeah. that you've been doing since season one in 2003. Yeah. What is, I mean, like, I, my two questions are like, at what point, filming those first couple episodes, first season, like at what point did you realize, oh wow, this is going to be huge. And then also on the backside of that, like what does it mean to still, it's 20 years later being called upon to play those that character? Well, we did the first pilot in 2001, 10, 10 years before this lovely child was born. 2001 in San Pedro, California. We knew we had something because we were making the crew laugh. We got the gaffers, the electrical guys. If you could make the crew laugh, forget it. You've got a good comedy. And we did it and we uh, presented it to Fox and Fox passed. 
And we're like, oh, well, well, we'll see what happens. A year and a half goes by. Jim Sharp is working at Comedy Central. He knows Ben, Tom, and Carrie. What do you got? We're looking for shows. Well, we got this pilot. Love it. Why don't you reshoot it for shot for shot, reshoot it again. And when it went to series, we just knew. We knew people were going to love it. And the, within three years, we were making a film, Reno 911 Miami in 2006, blowing up a whale on the beach, doing a red carpet premiere at the Chinese theater in Los Angeles where all these cars wrecked. And we were doing a, a live car, red carpet with our characters. It, and we knew that you just had something golden. You never knew that it was going to last this long. It had, I, Wendy, Mary, and I were let go after season five. We all came back in 2018, right before COVID actually, 2019, late 2019. And, but we came back again and they, and I, I, I didn't imagine it. And uh, it's been amazing. Quibi, Quibi falls down. We said to Roku, Roku to Comedy Central. We do one movie, the search for Q. We're going to do another movie. Uh, uh, the, Christmas uh, heist. The, yeah. The wonderful heist. Yeah. And so if it comes back again, I, I'm always there to do it. I can't believe it's gone this long. And Garcia is just that kind of guy. He's total Barney five, total thinks he's all this and all that. And just to be able to act with Cedric Yarbrough and, and Nisi Nash and Wendy McLennan, Tom and Ben and Nisi and Carrie, it's been amazing. I get to swim with dolphins. And I just never thought that this guy would kind of go that far, but I guess people like him. People like when. Ew, we got a little jello all over the screen. People like it with idiots uh, flounder. So, and I hope for her that Rock Talk is one of those characters that that keeps going. You know. Yeah, obviously it's it's, it's obviously very much connected to the audiences. Um, we're gonna let you go. What do you guys? Uh, I'll give you a few minutes here to promote uh, whatever you have coming up. What do you would you like to talk about? Where can people follow you? Uh, let the people know. Go ahead after you finish your jello. You have your Instagram, right? Riley Alice Rocky Instagram. You have a little Twitter. Mom helps her run the site, but you can follow her there. And uh, there's more Star Trek coming up uh, for sure. Well, you're, you're, you're recapping uh, the latest episodes and then waiting to get the nod. Mm -hmm. What else? What else would you like to say to people that are going to come to Baltimore? I don't know. <laughs> like, you excited to see them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is her first guy. She's a woman of very few words. That's fine. Mysterious. Yeah. And me, uh, we got a, I think it's been out there in the atmosphere, Rock, Paper, Scissors on Nickelodeon, uh, coming sometime in July, 2023. More, I think there's Farzar still out there. I'm playing, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? Zobo and a couple other uh, uh, characters on Farzar, the wonderful Waco Gun and Roger Jackson from Paradise PD. Um, Exploding Kittens, uh, I think that's coming out this year uh, on mass. I think they're calling it God Cat or Exploding Kittens. I play Jorgo, who's kind of a, a Ed Orgeron type of character. Um, and Bad Crimes. Um, and doing some more Camp Coral and some Beavis and Butthead, some ancillary uh, utility characters on that. Wait. And what else? Is season two out? No. It's not season out. two of Star Trek Prodigy is not out. They just wrapped up the oh, so season finale, but that's going to come soon, right? How do you say finale? Finale. <laughs> finale. Um, just finale like, sounds like Italian food. You want a calzone or a finale? Just um, um, season two is coming. That's all I have to say. Season two is coming. And definitely want to say thank you to all our service people. Thank you for all your service. And that's just amazing that what you do. And uh, we love you guys. Men and women, everybody, we love you for for helping serve. That's awesome. And and, and your social media where people can follow you? Oh, at Carlos Ellis Rocky Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. It's all the same handle. And I try to put new content up when I can. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys in Baltimore to see how she does. And well, just I, I, I yeah, you I you, you can you can you can't promo that one. I can't. Mama doesn't like that one. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, and, and uh, I have some more con dates coming up. I'll be in Altoona, Pennsylvania in June. That's June 9th through 11th at, in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And actually, I'll be in Pensacola, Florida in a couple of weeks after Baltimore you at the Pensacon. Going, why are you going and not me? Because I don't think you wanted to go. No, I do. You didn't want to do two in a row, though. I didn't want to do two. Uh, well, we thought it was too much. Then anyways, oh, other daughters. You guys yeah. are awesome. You guys are outstanding. We love you so much. You're getting so much love in the chats. I mean, literally, people right. calling out the shows they love, Paradise PD. Uh, everybody yeah. shouting out Star Trek Prodigy, saying they're excited for season two. So you guys are getting just a ton of love. Um, I thank you. Hopefully, 
we guys can get you back one day to give you the full experience and really yeah. dive in into the characters and to the to the history. Um, I, I I absolutely uh, adore your content, your your social media. I highly recommend people follow it because you really do put up some fun stuff that just makes me laugh and uh, takes me back to my to my youth. I appreciate you. Thank you, and I do want to let people know I was I grew up with Star Trek with you know. Uh, Captain Kirk and William Shatner and all those people. I really was never a Trekkie. And so this pulled me into the canon of the show with Kate Mulgrew and Janeway and all these people. And if you're not a Star Trek veteran, this is a great show to watch with your family and, and take you into the latest uh, journeys of this crew, uh, of, the, of, of the Voyager crew. It's really fun. It pulls you in. You don't have to be a previous Star Trek fan uh, or watch any of the other iterations. Definitely. It's definitely like, you will see old characters, but is it's like a new it's a new story of Star Trek. So like I've never seen Star Trek in my life before, and it definitely does make sense in my own in in its own way. Yeah, That's awesome. and it's a good message. It's about sort of misfits of society being accepted and going out and finding and pulling generations and different species together. You know that was Gene Roddenberry's sort of core line is still running through this version. And Rock Talk is so lovable. I, I've, she, I've heard nothing but the best i obviously i haven't seen it myself i'm being honest um uh, uh but i i've watched clips and i and i've seen the interviews and, and it's it's so beloved i've seen all the love that they have out there for the series and for the character i have people in the chats going see if they can get kate mulgrew on the show I'm like no. Look, that's that's i can't that's not we don't do that that's not <laughs> next time we'll see you. oh also stay tuned for toys because toys are coming out soon of the characters Oh, oh the, toy, the toy line. Okay. All right. She's getting good at the, uh, the, the promos. Um, I got a Murph plushie. Oh, yeah. We, recording. Yeah, we got a Murph plushie. That's Steve Bradley Baker's character, who's a genius. And and uh, maybe, who knows, somebody will bring something that they found to the college. You know how people at conventions are. Oh, oh I my. found this in uh, Japantown. What? What is it? It's a Rocco Flying Saucer. A Rocco Flying Saucer. You know. I can imagine they pull out all the stops. Uh, I will be there. I will be at the con. I would love to say hi to you guys. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I bring you a little, I have a little show bag gift I'd love to pass on to you guys just as a, a thank you for coming on the show and, you know. And we'll barter. <laughs> sounds sounds good sounds good I, I i always i always get autographs and stuff and i give it out to the audience anyway i love to i love to give so um we'll, we'll do something like that but but thank you so much guys uh uh i'll give you the last 10 seconds here to to say goodbye to the audience and then we'll toss it to another break say goodbye is rock guy <laughs> what <laughs> say pew 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 or whatever give bye it <laughs> what See you later. I know how to do voices. I'm a shoe. I'm <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna toss. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna toss to a quick break, and we'll be back with more. Right after.